Okay, in this video we're going to look at how to find the equation of a cubic function given only its two turning points. First thing we need to know is what is the standard form of a cubic function, and that is f of x equals ax to the power 3 plus bx squared plus cx plus d. We also need to know what the first derivative is. Now let's calculate that. f prime of x is equal to 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c. And the constant d falls away or equals zero. Now, let's see what happens when we substitute both of those points into the standard form. So from the original equation, if we substitute in point A, what do we get? We get that 2 is equal to A times negative 1 cubed plus B times negative 1 squared plus C times negative 1 plus D. If we simplify that slightly, we get 2 equals negative A plus B minus C plus D. Let's call that equation P. We can also substitute in point B, and that gives us negative 5 equals a times 3 cubed plus b times 3 squared plus c times 3 plus d. Simplify that slightly again, and we get negative 5 is equal to 27a plus 9b plus 3c plus d. Now what we see here is we've got two equations with four unknowns each, but we see both of them, both of the d's have a coefficient of one. So what we can do here is just subtract one from the other to give us an equation that only contains a, b, and c, which makes life a little bit easier for us. Let's call this equation q. And now, if we subtract q from p, so let's say p minus q. That gives us the following. 2 minus negative 5 is equal to 7. Negative a minus 27a is negative 28a. Minus 8b minus 4c. And d minus d is 0. Okay, now let's call this equation 1. Okay, now let's look at what happens when we substitute the points into the derivative. Okay, so from the gradient function, we have the following. We know that at the critical points, or rather specifically at the turning points of a function, the gradient is zero. So if you had to draw a tangent to the curve at that point, gradient of that straight line would be zero. Okay, so what we know is if we substitute in the x value into the gradient function, the outcome will be zero. So, the outcome of this will be zero when the x value in here is negative one or three. So let's start with a negative one. That'll give us three a times negative one squared plus two b times negative one plus c. Now simplifying that slightly, we get that zero is equal to 3a minus 2b plus c. Now let's call that equation 2. Okay, now we can do the same with the x value of 3. When x is 3, the gradient function will be equal to 0 again. So again, we can say the gradient function will be 0 when the x value in here is equal to 3. So we have 3a times 3 squared minus 2b times 3 plus c. And again, a bit of simplification yields the following. That 0 is equal to 27a plus 6b plus c. Ah, my apologies. This is a positive. Is it? No, that's a negative. This one is a positive. Okay, now that's a positive 6b, correct. Okay, now you see we've got three equations, all containing a, b, and c, with the same unknowns. 
So that's all we need. If we have three unknowns, we need a system of three separate equations to solve it. Now let's assume we know nothing about linear algebra. So we'll just solve it the old school, high school way by doing substitution. Okay, so let's say this one looks pretty easy to manipulate. We can rewrite this equation as C equals 2B minus 3A. And then we'll just substitute the 2B minus 3A into both equation 3 and equation 1. So let me get a new piece of paper and then we can write that down. Whoops. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to write down equation 1 was... 7 equals negative 28a minus 8b minus 4c. Equation 2 was the one we're going to substitute. So let's call equation 3 was the following. 0 equals 27a plus 6b plus c. And equation 3 was the one that we rewrote as c equals 2b minus 3a. So we're going to substitute this c expression into both of these equations. So for the first equation, we get 7 equals negative 28a minus 8b minus 4. And now instead of c, we have 2b minus 3a. 2b minus 3a. Okay, we multiply that out and and simplify it a little bit, which gives us the following. 7 equals negative 28a minus 8b. Okay, that's not going to work. Negative 28a plus 12a equals negative 16a. Now, negative 8b minus 8b is negative 16b. Okay, now let's see what happens when we substitute that c expression into equation 3. We get 0 equals... 27a plus 6b plus c, which is 2b minus 3a. Just collecting like terms here, 27a minus 3a is 24a. 6b plus 2b is 8b. Okay, so now we've got two equations with two unknowns each. So this is getting better. Let's call this equation x and equation y. So again, we can simplify these to solve them simultaneously, either by substitution or elimination, which is pretty much the same thing. I'm going to use elimination. So all we need for that to happen is have the coefficients of either of the unknowns be the same in both equations. So you can see, if you just multiply equation y by 2, the b's have the same coefficient. So I'm just going to say it times this one by 2, which will give... 0 times 2 is 0, 24 times 2 is 48, 8 times 2 is 16. Okay, and I'm going to rename this equation y. So now, let's add these two equations together. So equation x plus equation y prime that I've calculated there will give the following. 7 plus 0 equals 7, negative 16a plus 48a gives us what? It gives us 32a. And negative 16b plus 16b cancels out, that becomes 0. Thus we can solve for a. So 7 over 32 equals a. Good, we've solved one of the unknowns. Now what can we do? Obvious next step is to substitute this a value into this equation or that equation, either one that has only a's and b's. So let's say we put it in, in here. Okay, so therefore, 0 is equal to 24 times a, which was 7 over 32, plus 8b. Okay, now, 24 times 7. Okay, that's 140 plus 28. That's 168 over 32. And if you simplify all of this, what do you get? Let me just think about that one for a little while. You will get negative 21 over 20 over 32, I mean, which will be equal to your b value. 
Okay, and now for C, we can say, oh well, there, C is equal to 2B minus 3A. So C is equal to 2 times B minus 3 times A. Okay, solving for that, we get that C is equal to negative 63 over 32. All we have left to solve now is the D value from here. Okay. So that D value, we can just take one of these two equations, either equation P or equation Q, right? Because that's got an A, B, C, and a D in. The equation P looks pretty simple. So let's write that down. We have 2 equals negative A plus B minus C plus D. Okay, and we have solved for A, B, and C, so we just need D. Again, rewrite that as 2 equals negative and A is 7 over 32 plus B, which is negative 21 over 32. minus C, which is 63 over 32, plus D. And again, if you take 2 plus 7 over 32, plus 21 over 32, minus 63 over 32, what are you left with? You are left with 29 over 32 is equal to D. And there you have it, A, B, C, and D solved. So now all we need to do is rewrite that in standard form. Original form was ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Now substituting for a, b, c, and d, we get a with negative 7 over 32, plus, uh, sorry, positive 7 over 32, x cubed plus b, which was negative 21 over 32, let me just write that neater. Okay, so we had A, 7 over 32 x cubed. B was negative 21 over 32 x squared. C, negative 63 over 32 x. And D, 29 over 32. That's it. And now you can check for yourself if you do your der derivatives your point of inflection if it does match up to what we had initially which was a and b being negative one and two three and negative five for your turning points thank you